Well, here we are <clears throat> learning more new software and more technology as we change things around and we try to improve the quality of, um, of our recording and live streaming. We're going to begin live streaming this Sunday, we hope, and uh, that will be a much better quality product uh, output. And uh, so pray for us as we learn this uh, this new setup it's uh anyway uh i've been thinking about all the turmoil that we see going on around us and how that makes me feel and how we all have to survive this particularly vitriolic um, election cycle our country is in great turmoil uh, we really don't know how things are going to turn out but we do see people <clears throat> being absolutely as unkind as they can be to each other. <coughs> and it's, it's bothersome. Then on my walk this morning, I began to realize, thinking through it, that Jesus, and I've mentioned this before, Jesus really paid no attention to um, politics. He didn't really try to solve the problem of slavery. He didn't try to solve the the uh, poverty issues. He didn't try to instill a rebellious spirit against the Roman government. Uh, he didn't really try to, to uh, uh, depose the, the unlawful high priest. The high priest should not have been a high priest, was not of the ironic lineage that you have to be in order to be the high priest and the, the king of Israel was not even Jewish. And uh, so all of those things he could have pointed out and and tried to foment discord and and uh, all kinds of issues and problems for those those uh, items, but he didn't. He, he stayed on course. He did exactly what uh, he was sent to do. And I thought about the, the man Job, and we, we often wonder, why did God put the book of Job in, in the scriptures? It's sort of a downer. <clears throat> we see how Job is treated, how he loses everything, because uh, God is, is uh, uh, dealing with Satan in regard to, to Job and all of those things. Uh, and we, it's sort of disconcerting to read the book. And then we get all the way to the end of the book, and Job responds to those sorry friends that he's got who try to comfort him in the way that humans try to comfort one another. And it's just terrible, the things that they say and the accusations they level against Job. And at the end of the book, uh, where God finally enters into their conversation, and he never tells Job why. He never enlightens Job, and he really doesn't enlighten us as to why uh, he allowed Satan to do what he did to to Job. But in the end, what he does is he spends a whole chapter in describing himself. And he challenges Job. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. And then he goes on through all of creation, the different things he created, the lightning, the thunder, uh, all the all the amazing uh, things that we see in nature that man cannot duplicate, man not, man cannot control. There's a storm uh, hitting the the east coast even as I speak, and and we can't stop it. We we can warn people about it's coming on on shore and so on, but we can't slow it down. We can't stop it. We can't we can't rearrange lightning. We can't bring clouds in to provide rain for parched earth during a drought. We can't send rain away when too much rain is coming and we have a flood. Uh, we, we can do nothing about that. And God said, I did all this. I created all these things. And so tell me what you created. And, uh, and I really believe now that Job exists so that God demonstrates to us through Job that he's God. And he doesn't need, feel a need to explain himself to mankind that he's created and that he holds himself sovereign over all the affairs of man. And then we come to Isaiah, uh, and Isaiah is such a, an amazing, wonderful book, and it describes uh, <clears throat> the, the amazing 
aspects of God, and he tells us in Isaiah the the in the the uh, the fifty cha- the fifty section of chapters, and he says, "My ways are above your ways. My ways are higher than your ways." Basically. Uh, you are finite, I'm infinite, and you are not going to be able to explain all my ways. And so that helps me understand why Jesus didn't try to fix all the social ills uh, of the day when he arrived on the earth as, as a baby and grew up as an adult. And then he taught for three years, had a public ministry for three years. And he did a, a lot of miracles, a lot of wonderful things, but he didn't fix everything. He didn't heal, heal everybody. He didn't feel all, uh, feed all the hungry. Uh, he didn't free the slaves. He didn't kick the Roman uh, boot off the neck of Israel. He didn't do any of those things. Instead, he stayed on course and he taught what the Father gave him to teach and he did what the Father uh, uh, wanted him to do and then he allowed himself to be fastened to the cross to pay the ransom in his own blood for our sins. That was the fulfillment, fulfillment of the of the Father's plan. And that's why Jesus had such serenity and why he was able to say, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Because when we take our vision and the and the goals of our life and the values of our life and we fasten them on the Christ and God's will for the earth, we are no longer attached to what is going on here on the earth. Because we have this confidence that no matter what's going on, God is fulfilling his plan and his will for the earth. And we are marching inexorably toward the end of all things. And God is bringing into being uh, all the elements that he needs to be in place in order to fulfill prophetic scripture about how things are going to turn out in the end. And uh, it's not so that mankind will be more comfortable. It's not so that all slavery will end or all human trafficking will end. It's about fulfilling God's will for the earth and bringing his plan to to fruition. Now, ultimately, that is going to fix all the ills of the earth. There will be no slavery in the future. There will be no human trafficking or or sex trafficking in the future. There will be no pornography in the future. There will be no greed in the future. All those things God is going to eliminate. But but those are sort of like side issues. Those aren't the... The focal point of what God's going to do, what God's going to do is to fulfill his plan. And that's what he was trying to tell Job. Job, it's really not about you. It's what I'm doing, and and I don't know what all God was doing, but I there was something going on in the spiritual realm between the powers of evil and God that, that God was bringing to a conclusion through Job. And, and he never told Job uh, all the reasons that all this came about. He really didn't tell him the outcome. He just challenged him by saying, listen, I'm God. And all that you had, all the benefits that you had before, those were all from my hand. And and all the things that you're going to have in the future, those will all be from my hand. And and so it, it comes down to trusting God for the outcomes. Now we have a very controversial election coming up. And I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but God knows. And what God wants to happen here in the United States of America is going to come to pass. It's going to happen. And that might be uncomfortable for us or it might be comfortable. It depends on which side of the fence that you're on. And the the issue is that God is working out his plan. So uh, we as Christians, that's our challenge, that we don't allow the affairs, we don't entangle ourselves in the affairs of, of the earth. Uh, that's that's g- going to go along exactly as God wants it to go along. And what we need to fasten ours on, our eyes on, is what is God doing in my life? And that's what God's challenge was to Job. What, what am I doing in your life? That was Jesus' challenge to his disciples. Follow me. If you want to follow me, take up your cross daily and follow me. And so if we do that, what we're doing is we're, we're putting all of our eggs in God's basket without reservation. And we're not saying to God, God, you, you need to explain yourself. You need, to, you need to fill us in on what's going on here during this election. No, he doesn't. That's God's purview. And what we fix our eyes on is Jesus. And, and number one, what is Jesus doing in my life? in all of this? What what does God want to do in my life through all this? What does he want to teach me? 
And then, what do, God, what do you want me to do? What kind of a, a man or woman do you want me to be in the society around me? Uh, wh- who do you want me to talk to? What do you don't want me to do with my resources? And those are the things that capture our, our thinking, not who is going to win the election. That's going to cause all kinds of anxiety if our side doesn't win. But that's, that's not the point. The point is, uh, what does God want to happen? What is God's will in all this? And he's going to work his will out for our nation, for Israel, for all the affairs of the earth. So I can trust him. So let's move back from that precipice of, of anxiety and panic about what might happen in the country. I do believe we as Christians, we have responsibilities to be good citizens of whatever country we're a part, a part of. And, in, and I believe in patriotism and and uh, frankly, I believe in American exceptionalism, not because America in and of itself is exceptional, but God brought America, I believe, uh, into being for a sp- special reason. And, uh, and I believe that God has used America to, uh, to energize the, mo- the modern missions movement. I believe God brought America into being to, to uh, tilt the balance and to make sure that that uh, democracy and freedom won in World War One and World War Two, and uh, and I don't necessarily believe that God is is uh, choosing necessarily one side over another side, but He is He is uh, seeing His plan done on the earth, and He does good. He brings good gifts to man, and and so through my actions, I want to vote. I want to become. In, I want to be involved. I want people to know my ideas and my opinions, but I'm not going to hang my 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 mental or spiritual or emotional well being on the affairs of man. I'm going to hold. I'm going to hang my emotional, mental, and spiritual well being on the presence of God in my life, and no matter what circumstances may bring. That's not where my peace comes from. My peace comes from the throne of God. And, and learning of him, reading his word, and, and having confidence that he's working his will out on the earth. So may God give us ble- peace. May God g- give you peace of heart and peace of mind. And I know that some of us are going through very difficult times, very difficult trials. But God is in control, and God is bringing into my life and into your life just those things that he wants, just like he did in Job's life. And and. God doesn't explain himself to us, but we we must hold on to scriptures to, that say that whatever comes into my life, for those that follow Jesus, God takes all those circumstances and he turns them for good, whether they're negative or positive. He turns everything that comes into our lives, Romans 8, 28, 29, and 30 and 31, for good. And that good is to conform me to the image of Christ and to glorify and honor himself. So let's hang on to the Lord during all this time. Let's hold on to each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's help each other turn our eyes off of the affairs of the world and on to the wonders going on at the throne of God and the wonders of his word. And we find our emotional, spiritual, uh, and mental well-being uh, in resting in him, finding that peace that Jesus promised for all those that follow him. God bless you. Have a great week.